Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Fee Hills, the co-founder of um, Mind Nudger AI, and I'm here for the is it third time, Tony, this week. It is for empathy. Yeah, and today we're going to be covering um, empathy for leaders, particularly with Tony Dane, who is from Future Vision. And Tony has developed a mind nudging journey, a six week mind nudging journey for empathy for leaders that's going to be launching very soon. And today we're going to take this opportunity to talk about it, but also talk and focus back on the whole idea as to why, I suppose, really the whys and wherefores that learning in work week 2024 is not a coincidence that they're talking about learning power being lifelong learning, continuous learning. And that's very much what the, you know, the mind nudger AI, not just philosophy, not just the experiential learning, but the entire platform is built to be a mindset navigation system as the world becomes, you know, change becomes faster and faster. So within there, we build journeys and we build them through with experts. And one expert is Tony Dane, who you may have watched already this week. So, Tony, let me pass it over to you and tell me a little bit about more about you, first of all, and your background, and then why you picked this sort of really doubling down on the empathy, not just for leaders, but in different different elements of business. Good morning, Fee. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, lovely to be back again. It is three days in a row. So apologies if you're a little bit bored of me already. Um, we do have some different guests coming on on Thursday and Friday to break things up a little bit. And uh, it's just to show it's not only myself that's building journeys. Thank you for the intro, Fee. Um, expert. Mm. I'm not sure I ever really consider myself an expert. I think I specialise in certain things, but I'm not, I don't think I'm an expert. But um, let's see where we go with that anyway. So my background uh, Tony Dane, MD of Future Vision. I've been involved in the learning and performance space for ooh, about 25 years now. Uh, first working in contact centre, customer experience space before moving into the consultancy and designing and developing training development programmes. I'm also a sports coach, so I coach a men's and women's football team. So I end up drawing together the kind of the best from the worlds of sport and performance psychology into the worlds of business and what I call human skills for high performance. And that's really kind of my sweet spot, this thing called human skills. And it kind of spans leadership. It spans frontline teams. It's all about high performance. And of course, within that, Within that, there's this really key thing, and a real passion of mine, which is empathy. And I think it's a really important topic now when we're in a world where we've got massive polarization, we've got multi-generations in the workforce, we've got hybrid and uh, flexi working. So we've got all these different challenges as a leader that maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we just weren't having to contend with. And of course, this puts a lot of pressure on leaders to be really able to connect with their people, create climates where they feel safe, they can do their best work, they're connected. And of course, a big part of that is empathy. A big, big part of that is empathy. So that's where we're going to go today. We're going to kind of have a look at kind of why is empathy so important for leaders? Why have I taken this as one of our early journeys as part of that kind of human skills piece? And what's really involved? What can you expect? And then ultimately at the end, we've got a little bit of an offer on as part of learning at work week. We've got a very special offer for this journey as well. So we'll tell you a little bit about that at the end. So that gives you a bit of an overview of me, Fee, and kind of where we're going to go. So um, yeah, far away. Uh, well, I wanted to ask, what do you think makes... Uh... This one, and I'm, I'm going to talk about like empathy and leadership, but this, so I want to be quite specific today about leadership and um, and the importance of developing that in our leaders. And I want, it sounds quite simplistic because everybody's sort of saying, oh yeah, leaders need to be more em em empathic, etc. But how do we turn that into a journey that actually fosters that at a sort of bigger scale? So it's all right. We might have one who one leader who is naturally quite, empath, uh, you know, uh, empathic. And then you might have sort of 
10 that are not. So how do we get the other 10? How do we create this journey? Or what have you done to create this journey that is going to make that happen in practice for habitual change to really foster that empathy and measure it? Was that okay. a bit of a long question? It is, it is a long question. Um, and I'll pick out the bits I can from it. So I think like many topics in the human skills arena, empathy isn't something that can be done over the course of a couple of hours in a session. Uh, learning about your emotions and those of others and being able to connect and genuinely convey empathy and be empathetic to not only others, but also yourself is an ongoing journey. And what's what, what's what works really well about these journeys is that they're over a period of time and they're actually in the live environment. So you have the opportunity to really learn at work and reflect through live experiences that you're actually having. And that can be really powerful because, as you know, Fee, when we, you know, one of the key ways that we learn is through having an experience and then being able to reflect on that experience, make sense of it, and then maybe do something differently. And that's what the mind nudging does really, really well. It just works on that introspective shifting your thinking just one small step at a time. And so over the course of six weeks, we can just begin to layer different levels of thinking and behavior and skill that by the time we get to the end of that six week journey, we've got people in a position where they develop their thinking, they're much more conscious of their behavior and their behavior on other people. And then also they have a number of skills, tools and techniques that help them genuinely convey empathy. So that's for me, I think that's why it's a really important thing because it's a bit of a lifelong journey. And as a leader, it really starts by you transforming yourself because it has to be mirrored from the top down. And that emotional transformation, that is a perpetual journey. You've got to continually work on yourself to deepen your self-awareness so that you can manage your emotions and help your employees navigate their emotions as well. And that doesn't happen in five minutes. That takes a period of time and it takes a number of things. So we talked about mind nudging, and that's one aspect of our journeys. But we also have pop-up workshops where we come together as a group. And this is probably what you'd expect as a bit more of a workshop style, where we're going to come together as a group. And this is where we may well develop one or two shared skills and activities, um, some new strategies, for instance. So there's different elements to this kind of 70, 20, 10 blend. We also have the shared thinking pods, which really are your home of social learning. So when people are on this journey, they're able to go and share their experiences with their teams, with their colleagues, their cohort that they're on this with together. And of course, by being able to do that, they can learn from one another. They can reflect and talk to each other. And often if they're in the same environment, then of course you've got lots of dynamic conversations happening. And like anything, you need, an, you need a number of people to be moving in a certain direction to get a real shift and change. And another thing that the journeys allow is that we can work with numerous cohorts across multiple sites and regions, all on the same journey, but they can all be going on it at slightly different rates because it's an individualized journey to a great degree. So it can really work in that sense um, and give people a really strong experience of what it's like to start that journey of building your emotional and social awareness. And that's not something that happens overnight. Um, and we recognize that and have always recognized that. It takes a period of time. It takes consistency. It takes habit. So it's, 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 I guess what I'm saying is it's set perfectly for this type of experience, this type of content. Does that make sense, Fee? It does. It does. And I know it goes far deeper than that. We have actually got a question. Well, not a question, actually. It's a thought from, 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 uh, obviously on LinkedIn. Actually, it's coming through as a LinkedIn user, which seems a little bit impersonal because I know that when it comes through StreamYard, sometimes we don't get the name. So apologies for that. Um, or we only see the name afterwards. So really apologize because that seems quite rude for, 
from me but it's not meant that way i just i haven't got your name but it says good question leaders who lack empathy will need a strong encouragement to notice much more about what's happening with others and um, within the effect that it has on the job in hand so just speak to that a second if you can yeah so it's a, it's a really good um observation statement question um of course our how we impact other people has a massive impact on their levels of psychological safety their levels of wanting to connect and team to be innovative and collaborate and so absolutely as a leader we have to be conscious of how we manage our emotions and how that can spill out towards other people. There's this thing called emotional contagion, which means that, you know, we give off energy. We have a kind of a vibe. You know that when people walk into a room and our energy can be picked up on by other people yeah. and those around us. We've, we've seen that. So, you know, the leader that has that emotional outburst that suddenly sets the tone for the rest of the day with everybody else. And it's great when leaders are in a good space and that, that emotion, those, those uh, expressions are positive and supportive and encouraging. But when those expressions of emotion are negative and damaging and un, unmanaged, that can have a really detrimental impact on the rest of the team. So when we think about empathy, we don't just think about it as how I listen and how I engage and how I am to other people. We start that journey by looking at how we are and our ability to self-manage, to look after our thoughts and feelings, to ensure that we're able to express our emotions in a healthy and effective way. And of course, by starting that journey with ourselves and begin to tune into what kind of feelings and emotions do we experience on a regular basis, then we're more likely and more able to, to be able to extend that outwards. And we're more able then to be able to recognize and appreciate other people's emotions and feeling states. And if we're able to do that, then we can begin to connect together. And by doing that, we can begin to understand what's going on with that other person. Okay, so that's something. good. So this is a good question for what comes next then. From Murray. Yeah, from Murray. Question is, because um, he had to put his name in the actual comments. Um, my question is, Murray's question is, okay, what is an example of a mind nudge um, that would encourage a macho, his words, not mine, leader to con, uh, consider, I'm guessing, other people's feelings. In other words, other how other people feel. So in other words, being empathic. So how would a mind nudge work? I, I don't think, uh, uh, Murray, just to speak here as if you were in the panel, um, I think to, a, to an extent, journeys are not about one mind nudge. Every single process of a mind nudge compounds over the length of the journey to create em em you know empathy because it's built on technique skill and mind frame so frame of mind so but do give an example for example how the aura works ora or or even a mind nudge tony that can really address M uh, murray's very valid question Okay, so, I mean, as you said there, Fee, it's not necessarily just one nudge that will shift everything and suddenly turn a, ma I think the term was a macho leader, is that the term? Uh, into somebody that's more emotionally macho, aware and yeah. sensible. Yeah, so uh, the first thing, I mean, one of the early mind nudges in our Empathy for Leaders journey is called to catch a critic. And this is all about you noticing your internal dialogue and how your dialogue has this, one of the most powerful elements of it is your judge, your inner critic. And just getting you to notice how you comment on yourself, other people or situations, and the impact then this might have on your emotional system can be a really, really quick eye opener as to the connection between how we think and our emotional system 
and the triggers that begin to stimulate that as well. So it begins to build your awareness and a recognition of what's going on for other people. And then with that understanding, we begin to learn a bit more about the other person. So that, you know, when we begin to step into other people's worlds and really begin to understand their needs, their wants, their challenges, what's really going on for them, that gives us a much better appreciation of them as a human being. And ultimately, as a leader, we need to understand and know our people as people as much as we do as performers. So once we begin to shift into the space of seeing their world a little bit more without judgment, so being a bit more curious and not being judgmental about their situation, their world, etc., we begin to learn some really great stuff. We begin to understand what's really going on for that person. And by doing that, we can begin to understand how to get the best out of them, what they really need from us as a leader, how they prefer to interact and engage. What are some of their preferences? And once as a leader, we begin to understand that and we see the, the, the relationship that that can create and the dynamic that that can create in terms of engagement, motivation performance then in my experience and it's not for absolutely everybody but most people pretty much see the benefit and recognize that actually what they thought they knew about somebody in a situation probably was a little bit off kilter maybe was being distorted by some of their own thinking and once they've cleaned some of that up and recognize that what they're dealing with is another human being here who feels exactly like they do. They go through the same experiences because part of the mind nudging journey fee is you looking at yourself as a leader and how you experience some of these things and know them to be true. So what's it like for you when you're under pressure, when you're struggling? If I can relate to that and know that I have those experiences, I also can see that other people will go into that position and have those experiences as well. And that allows us to create a little bit more empathy towards each other. So in answer to Murray's question, there isn't a magic wand. There never is in anything in life, unless you're Aladdin. Um, but there are a number of core steps that we can take along this journey that really work in terms of shifting our thinking, creating greater awareness, and then creating a motivation to be a more human empathic leader. And that's what I'm really interested in. How do I help people, organizations with their leadership become more human so they deliver better climates where people can be themselves, feel genuine and authentic, show a little bit of vulnerability, and do their best work. And my role as a leader, ultimately, is to facilitate that environment. That's my role as a leader. In, for me, in the digital workplace, where we go now, my role as a leader is to help my team be the best they can be and create a climate where I do that. And a central part of that for me is your empathy and that okay. emotional intelligence. Okay, so that is brilliant, and that has on. I think it's answered that question. It's Murray's question, but uh, it's a very, very valid one all the way around. And it, it, what it speaks to also is the complexity that this plays out in. So, if we look at the complexity of human change and mindset change, is it is without a doubt one of the most important things in the world right now, especially right now. But it is complex. So iteratively approaching it and blending it in the right way in a journey is not only make or break, it is what makes it work or not work. So this is why we're moving from programs to journeys um, and making them experiential because all parts of the all parts of this matter. So if we've got like um a mind nudge speaking to uh, also he has added in their own feelings as well. And one of the things about a mind nudge is observe, reflect, adapt, repeat, observe, reflect, adapt, repeat. We are changing rituals. We are changing. We are creating new habits. We are creating new knowledge or helping them create new knowledge. So in order to do that, they have to observe first, like Tony sort of that. I think that's what you're getting at. You can tell me if I'm wrong. But um, you're putting them in an environment where they can observe their own their own self, 
and other people around them. So you're giving them that introspective space that allows that, how am I in this situation? How empathic am I being? What effects am I having on other people? Blah, blah, blah. And then the next part of that mind nudge midweek is reflection. So how did I do there on that? Because if we don't break this down, we can't become aware of everything at the same time. We just get overwhelmed. So that's what the mind nudge does is allow us to look at a frame of thinking, observe it, reflect on it, action it, change it. But the change, the accountability and responsibility for changing that thought or frame of mind ultimately is down to us. So all that can be provided is the environment to allow that to happen. And that's what I think through, especially like a journey like Tony's, like empathy for leaders couldn't be more important. So we make it sound like it's, ju it's just a training program. It absolutely isn't. It's a change program. Um, yes, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you for your brilliant question, because that, that really got that dialogue going. So over to you, Tony. Tell us more about the shared thinking, how that follows on. OK, so as mentioned, there's different elements to the journey. It kind of mirrors the 70, 20, 10. We've talked about the mind nudging. We've got these pop up workshops. We have the shared thinking pods where you can come in and you share your learning, where we'll also facilitate what we call either some golden nuggets or some random acts of learning. So that's almost like the glue, if you like, through the journey. We've also got a performance support library as well, where there's additional tools, uh, PDFs, videos to deepen and extend your learning. So you've got a complete ecosphere there. And I think that's really important with empathy because, again, it's a big topic and it's, it's not done in a day. And it takes a period of time to kind of shift that thinking and behavior and get everything in line. Um, because, as you know, as human beings, we're, we're complicated. Um, we've got a few of our own challenges. And sometimes, you know, even when we know better, we sometimes fall back into some of our poorer, not so serving habits. So, um, yeah, it's got that period of, um, I suppose what I'm saying here is a period of time to build that understanding and transformation. Um, so, shall I tell us a little bit about the journey, Fee? Please, wicked. <laughs> Sometimes slightly off putting when we're slightly delayed. Right, guys, so just so everybody funny. knows there's a delay again. We've got delay, so it's like we're, we're, we're managing the delay, let's say, of the wonderful technology of our world. Uh, yeah, Tony, tell us about the journey. It's a six week journey, so walk us through it. I'm very excited about this journey. Okay, so who's the journey for, first of all? So the journey is designed and aimed at new and emerging leaders, or what we sometimes call the accidental manager. Why? Because we've got so many new managers, new and emerging managers in the workplace. They're facing a number of different challenges that we've already talked about. And we know that a large majority of those managers are simply not equipped to deal with and manage their teams effectively and create the levels of performance and engagement that's needed. And one of those challenges, one of those gaps is empathy. So that's why we focused our journey on the new and emerging leader population. So if you've got new and emerging leaders or what we call accidental managers, okay, and this is no fault or blame on them, we often do this as organizations. We've got brilliant people in our front line. We're scared of losing them. We, they feel like they need to move somewhere. So we promote them into the role of team leader, frontline manager. And then we wonder why they struggle because we don't necessarily, A, they're not necessarily always equipped with the skills that they're going to need for that role. And we don't necessarily equip them with those skills. So we create a double whammy. We take someone great out of the front line and we then put in, in an ineffective at this stage potential leader that has a massive impact on their team. Because if you think about it, that new and emerging leader population, frontline leaders probably manage more people in an organization than anybody else. And often they're managing frontline customer experience teams, sales teams, frontline operations, whatever it might be. So we t we hone in on this population because they have the most influence on your frontline people. And they're really, really key. So that's where we target the journey. How do we target it? So we work in cohorts. So we work in groups of up to 20 people. So this is a really brilliant solution for those. Those larger organizations that have got, you know, really hundreds of leaders that they want to train up and develop in a, in a, a different way 
a more effective and scalable way, and most importantly, a more sustainable way, because that's the key thing. How do we sustain learning from that first drop all the way through that journey so we've got that momentum? So that's kind of where what who it's for, why we framed it in that direction. What does it involve? Well, it's six weeks. It starts, you know, I've, I've already shared the process of mind nudging. So you start with an orientation. You then have your mind nudging week, which is, as Fee said, is a Monday, Wednesday, th Friday, observe, react, action, adapt. You've then got a variety of pop-ups that litter the journey. So I think in my empathy journey at the moment, I've got three or four core pop-ups. And then there's the opportunity to drop in additional ones should, should that be needed, should that be wanted. But we have a core there. Um, but in terms of the, the, the content for the journey and how we're going to do empathy for leaders, we'll start with the leader themselves. We'll start with what we call self-empathy and that emotional intelligence and awareness, looking at our thoughts, looking at our emotional state. Looking up. And we do a little bit on understanding the brain. So I'm not a psychologist or a neurologist, but there are two or three things that if we really understand about our brain and our nervous system, can really kind of help us out a bit in life and kind of help us manage ourselves a bit better, take out a bit of the stress and strain. So we start with just a little bit of that insight, getting into that space, then looking on that introspective piece of where am I going with this? What are my thoughts and feelings? How do I, how do I navigate those? How do I self-manage? We then begin to step into others. So as a leader, I need to be able to have my radar up and be able to recognize and appreciate other people's different emotions and feeling states. I've then got to be motivated to begin to see their world, really understand what's going on, treat them as an individual. And then of course I can move into that action space because it's really three stages really. Empathy with self and understanding my emotions and awareness, empathy with others, being able to connect with them, understand their emotions and feelings, really tune into that. And then ultimately it moves to action. So what actions do I take? And this is where we got what I call kind of, it's, it's really compassion. You can call it empathy in action. You could call it behavioral empathy, but ultimately it's, it's, the, it's me doing stuff. I'm feeling motivated to do things to help you feel better, to take some of the stress, the demands out of your role. So a simple example, I might be a member of the team that's really overwhelmed. I've got a lot on at the moment. I've got a couple of really important projects. You recognize that and you may you find a way to take a little bit of that demand away from me for the short period. That's much more effective than what used to happen when we talked empathy. And people would just say things like, well, I'm really sorry that you're under strain. I can appreciate, you know, you've got a lot going on. There's a place for using language, but that's isn't it? That's not how you're going to connect with people with empathy. So it's got to go beyond some of what I used to see as quite common approaches to empathy. It's got to really get into, into the heart of stuff. And this is what our program does. And by going over six weeks, you can really get into the meaty stuff, the, really, the stuff that really matters, get rid of the superficial and really focus on the stuff that's really going to land with people, really going to resonate with them. So they're inspired themselves to develop this greater awareness and to add to their, their toolkit, their skill set. Because yes, there's, there's a trait, we can have a leaning towards it, but everybody can learn the skills of empathy. It absolutely Excellent. can be learned. So, so <laughs> the delay, the joys of delay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, now because we're closing off, it is now one minute left. Yeah. In one minute, tell us how they can get in touch with you or or us, and then we'll get we'll okay. obviously put them in touch. Yeah. So we've we've just launched this journey along with five or six others as part of our launch for Learning at Work Week, and so these now are available now um, for up till the thirty first of March you can access our Learning at Work Week May. special offer. 31st of May, I should say, yes. Um, you can access our Learning at Work Week special offer. Why are we doing this? Well, it's quite simple. It's Learning at Work Week. We want to give a little bit back. But also, this is very new. 
with this is a very new approach if you're used to standard development programs and training this is going to be completely different to what you've experienced before so we want to give you the opportunity to experience this its impact and power at a significantly reduced rate just for this first period so anything booked by the 31st of may you can access that special rate after that we'll be on our regular rate because we know it's a brilliant product and there's some fantastic journeys that are really beginning to shift people's thinking and behavior. Um, so if you want to find out more, drop me a DM, message, or you can drop me an email, Tony at futurevisiontraining.co.uk. Uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn um, or, or they can reach out to yourself as well, Pete, because you know, you're know you a you're a specialist in this space as well. And um, you, you and I are working very closely together. So regardless of the way, do come and say hello. Um, yeah. We love this stuff um, and we're really keen to share it with you and do some great, meaningful um, people work. So um, thank you. And uh, see you all again. A couple of questions. We've gone, we've gone past the time. That, sorry, this delay is driving me insane. Um, the um, the uh, couple of questions. I think it's Murray again. Can't see Murray, but I am going to make that assumption. Where are the links to the other events of the week? We were actually, I think I did put them in the bottom of all swaps over, you know, the, the links to the events each day. But that's a really good question um we will make sure they're in every event so if you go to the bottom of this event for example we'll make sure we put the links to the other events we are posting them but you know you miss posts on linkedin you know we all see it some of us don't so it's a bit haphazard on that way so yeah and it dm us if you want something specific dm v hills or tony dane and we'll obviously get you any information you want big shout out to chris He's got Christopher Farnas there. Chris Farnas, amazing guy. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you again, uh, Chris, in, in on here. And uh, do get in touch. I, I hope you're doing well. So enough to say, because we've gone past the time again, uh, but just to mm -hmm. say, Tony, thank you very much for today. And great, to, great to have you here again. Tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is? Uh, tomorrow we have... We have Rich. No, we've got Glenn tomorrow. Haven't Glenn. We? Glenn is Glenn is going to be introducing a really interesting yeah. journey for leaders. Um, and I'm not going to say too much more, but it's it's a really in-depth, powerful journey um, that if you want to look after your state and really be your best as often as you can be, even in those most pressurized moments, then this is a journey for you. So, um, yeah, definitely tune in to um, catch Glenn here tomorrow. And um, I'll probably, tu probably tune in myself. And then on oh, Friday. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, everybody. And obviously, people watching on the recording. Sorry, go on. Carry on. I was just saying, then on Friday, we've got the lovely Richard and Kath. And they're going to be introducing their brand new journey all around accountability and the power of taking ownership and self-responsibility. So another great journey for leaders. Um, yeah, there we go. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, lovely to have you here as always. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. I'm, gonna, Goodbye, I'm going to end this now. Thank you, Tony. Bye. Bye.